right, so now we're looking at compensation. So we have two parts in compensation. We've got to pay our camera workforce and our UAV drone workforce. So the camera workforce, uh, it has a very similar look to the drone workforce, but the inputs don't necessarily need to be the same. So for base wage, if you apply a base wage that's really negative, um, then your workers will tend to revolt. They'll they'll have some kind of problem with that. You'll see we've got 719, and all those workers are really unhappy because they're getting paid uh, worse each year. But on the other hand, if you pay them a lot more, you don't get a huge benefit out of assembly capability. Yes, you get a little bit of a benefit out of earnings per share sometimes, but uh, most often you're going to be good at around 0%. And the reason that uh, a 10% uh, increase in wages is not advisable as well is if you do that year after year, you're going to be very unhappy at the end of the game. It's going to be very difficult for you to decrease the base wage enough so that you get back to what is profitable. And another word on the industry average. Now, the industry average is a curious thing that they put the, the, the industry average for the last year here. And I would say that this has done a disservice to uh, those who play Gold Bus. Um, if you're into utilitarianism, which uh, you might be if you're looking to get the best grade, you're not looking to be uh, kind to these fictional workers. You really just want the best performance out of them. And so unless you have some ulterior motive or some way that you want to uh, approach the game, I would suggest that you do whatever is going to give you the best earnings per share. And you ignore the industry average completely. So let's take a look at this. So let's go base wage. Let's maybe give them a little bit of a boost in base wage. Uh, that gives a little bit, uh, spent one cent of earnings per share. And it gained just a little bit of assembly capacity without overtime. And so let's let's keep it at that. And maybe that will allow the workers to continue to, to be happy. So again, I say somewhere between negative three and positive three, pick something, kind of run with it, and you can see some interesting things happen as you do. So assembly quality incentive, attendance bonus, fringe benefits. You Again, you just want to do whatever is going to give you the highest earnings per share. So let's take a look at this earnings per share, $3.76. And we also have, uh, let's go down in assembly quality incentive. I'm just going to use my up and down arrow keys and the tab keys and the shift tab keys to cycle through these different elements. Um, and I'm going to do whatever, not combination, but whatever individually will give me the best earnings per share. Okay, so here I've got an earnings per share of $3.65. I'm just going to cycle through these selections and I get up to about $3.76 at $2.40. And it starts to taper off, it looks like. And so it, me be caring about my earnings per share and not caring about what other people think of what my company is doing in terms of the industry average, I want to pick whatever is going to give me the best earnings per share. It's about there, $3.76. I'm comfortable right there, which was where it was originally. Um, you don't need to um, think about what it was originally. You just do whatever is best for earnings per share. So now let's take a look at attendance bonus. So I'm going to go up in attendance bonus, and it seems like I'm getting more earnings per share if I go up. And if I go down, well, that also gives me more. Actually, it gives me more earnings per share to have an attendance bonus of $50, which is the lowest. But that's where I'm going to be. And the reason is because it gives me the most profit. So let's take a look at fringe benefits. And if I go up, then I'm losing a lot of uh, cash, a lot of profit. If I go down and I offer maybe even zero fringe benefits package, I'm going to get the best earnings per share. Which, and so I'm looking right here at the earnings per share as I cycle through those. Best practices is also the same way, but there is one caveat that I suggest. If you have a worker that uh, is willing to do just the same, or if you have a, a state of this, so if we look at this, we'll cycle through this, and it looks like it's sort of pinned to a $3.92 cent. Here, $3.92 cent, it goes all the way to the top. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be on the high side for best practices, given that everything is roughly equivalent, or do you want to be on the low side for best practices? And I would suggest that you want to be on the high side. There's a, there's a bit of a cumulative effect and as you go in higher best practices, then your assembly capability will uh, marginally improve. Okay, so now that we've changed everything so that we have the best earnings per share, we're going to leave it at that. Now, unfortunately, though, is if you change something on the marketing pages or the product design pages or really anywhere in the system, I suggest you go back and you test these to make sure that you got it right. So let's take a look at drone workforce. We pay our AC camera workforce very little except for best practices. Uh, what's going to happen with drones? Well, we, don't, we can't say that it will be one thing or another. Let's go down to zero and see if that oh, wait, it decreased our earnings per share by quite a bit. So let's take a look as we cycle through these, whether or not we can get an earnings per share that is the highest. Where do we want to pay our workers? Well, it keeps going up. If I pay my workers an uh, assembly quality incentive of $10 per unit, then that gives me the maximum profit, the maximum earnings per share. And that's, that's where I want to be. I, again, I ignore the industry average. I don't care what other people think about what they're doing. They have very different companies. And I look at the next uh, bit. So maybe I want it to be low, just like in the camera. And it looks like if I make it higher, it will be the highest. So I'm happy with that. And I look at fringe benefits. Let's start off low. And let's go incrementally up, using the arrow keys up and down. And it looks like somewhere in there, the maximum amount of fringe benefits package is what gives me my highest earnings per share. And that's fine. That's great. Now, best practices. Where do I want to be? Again, let's start off low and let's go up until we find the place where the earnings per share is the highest. And it looks like $4, somewhere in $4. And I want to be on the high side because that gives me an assembly capability that is a little bit, which is this right here, assembly capability, that's a little bit higher on the high side. And all things being equal, which they are, the profit is going to be just the same if I do it at 5,000 or near 5,000, right, as 9,000. So which do I pick? I pick the higher quantity.